It's that time again. It's the podcast that takes your personal and professional life to a whole new level. Whether you're selling a product, selling a service, or selling yourself, one thing is for sure. You're always selling for life. Welcome to another installment of the Selling for Life podcast, sponsored by Conquer Parts, a world of parts with a personal touch. This podcast is about more than just selling stuff. We think if you stick around, you'll get a lot out of it. I'm Steve, your host. This is episode 21. Can you believe it? It's the week before Christmas, a very busy time of the year for all of us. Life can get really crazy this time of the year. You know, the stress, it mounts. Stress on stress and anxiety, it can take control of your life, it can take control of your heart. And indeed, despite being a time when we should have joy and rejoice the birth of the Savior, we instead let all the hustle and bustle weigh on our minds. This is especially, this is especially a stressful time when money is tight. I know firsthand all about that. And I had a pretty rough week. There have been some challenges I did not expect to face, and they have caused me to do some soul-searching. Funny thing is that tribulation, when it enters your life, and it will, there are generally two paths you can take. One leads to confusion and despair, and the other leads to insight and, you know, introspection, I would guess you could say it's easy to take the first path and much harder to take the second but i believe it's much more rewarding in the end if you try to see what god wants you to see during the tough times and uh, coming out the other side is usually chalked full of blessings you know attitude is everything a bad attitude will never ever have positive results a positive attitude on the other hand Well, it won't eliminate trouble in your life, but it will help you deal with it. I truly believe that. You have to work on approaching problems with the right attitude. The challenges I faced this week has upset the podcast universe for this episode. And for that reason, we're going to turn to Zig Ziglar for a little more on the very important subject of attitude. A number of years ago, Larry Majors, my executive assistant, got a phone call from a lady in Birmingham, Alabama. At the end of the conversation, she said, Zig, she said, I believe this woman thinks she's got an impossible problem, but I believe you can solve that problem her with her in just a few minutes if you will spend that time with her. I said, well, Laurie, tell her to meet me backstage. I'll get there about 10 minutes early. They, my schedule was such that was about all I had. Well, I got there, and I was on uh, backstage behind the curtain on one side. She spotted me from the other side, and as she walked across the stage, I have never seen as much anger in a human being in my life as I saw in her. She almost started crying when she saw me. She said, oh, I'm just so glad to see you. I got this horrible job. I hate it. I hate everything about it. I hate everybody down there. I mean, uh, you talking about negative nails, she was it. She said, can you help me? Now, understand, I've only got about 10 minutes. So I looked at her, and uh, one thing I have learned, I don't do counseling, but I talk with a lot of people who do in psychology, psychiatry, and the ministry. And they tell me that everybody who comes to you with a problem are not necessarily looking for a solution. I couldn't understand that for a long time. Why do they bring you a problem if they don't want to solve it? Well, I can tell you why. They want to tell you about it, you about it, you about it, you about it, and you about it. And if you foul up the deal and solve the problem, they can't tell you again, you again. They want the attention that goes with the problem. And every company just about it has that kind of an individual. They want the attention that goes with griping and, uh, and complaining. Well, I looked at the lady, and it wasn't unkindly, but firmly I said to her, yes, and you know, ma'am, I'm afraid your problem is about to get worse. She said, what do you mean? I said, I believe they're going to fire you. <laughs> 
She was stunned. I couldn't have stunned her more if I'd hit her in the face with a bucket of ice water. She said, fire me? Why on earth would they fire me? The inflection in her voice clearly said, they're the bad guys. I'm the good guy. Why don't they fire them and keep me? Have you ever noticed that people who are the problem never recognize that they are? They're in complete denial. They think denial is just a river in Egypt. <laughs> Why would they fire me? I said, ma'am, I don't believe there's a company in America big enough to contain this much poison in one small spot. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that when somebody is about to lose something they've been complaining about, whether it's a car, a home, a mate, a job, or whatever, when all of a sudden it appears they're going to lose them, it takes on brand new value. She looked at me and said, well, what can I do? I said, do you really want to know? She said, yes, I do. That's the reason I came to see you. I came looking for help, but you sure haven't been any help so far. <laughs> I said, well, ma'am, I've got an idea, and I will absolutely guarantee you it positively, definitely, absolutely will work if you will just do it. She said, I'll try anything within reason. I said, okay, when you get home tonight, all of your household tasks are complete. It's bedtime. Get off in a room right by yourself. Get a sheet of paper out, and at the top of it write, I like my job because she interrupted me. She said, that'll be easy. I don't like nothing about that job. Don't like nothing about those people down there. And I said, well, just as a matter of curiosity, do you work there for benevolent reasons, or do they pay you for working there? She said, well, I got to confess, they pay me. And I said, and you don't like to be paid. Oh, she said, yes, I do. I said, okay, tell you what you do. Open your notebook right now. We'll start our list of the things you like about your job. They pay you for working there, and you do like it, don't you? She said, absolutely. But she just stood there. I said, no, open your notebook now, and we'll get uh, busy on the list. She just stood there. I said, ma'am, let me, let me tell you what my experience in life has been. I've discovered that in 100% of the cases, no exceptions, people who won't take step number one never take step number two. You see, she had come to me with an impossible dream. Her dream was that nice Mr. Ziegler was going to solve all of her problems, and she would live happily ever after. Well, folks, I got news for you. I can't solve her problems. I can't solve your problems. But I will give you some steps that I'll absolutely, definitely, and positively will work for you, as it worked eventually for her. I said, well, ma'am, let me tell you something. Unless you're willing to take step number one right now, it's been nice talking with you. She angrily opened her notebook. Before we got through, there were 22 things she liked about her job. Not only did they pay her for working there, they paid her above average. She had three weeks vacation with pay. She had a retirement program. She was in on profit sharing. She had health insurance, life insurance, and accident insurance. She lived less than 10 minutes from home. She was in on management decisions. The company sent her to three seminars a year to be paid for. She had her own private office and parking place. 22 things that she liked about her job. Now I said, ma'am, when you get home tonight, everything is finished. Get off in a room right by yourself. Close the doors. Change one word from I like my job to I love my job. Get in front of that mirror. And folks, I cannot say this strongly enough, but I'm going to try. The eyes are the windows of the soul. Look yourself in the eye and with excitement and enthusiasm say, I love my job because they pay me for working there. I love my job because they pay me above average for working there. I love my job because I have a wonderful insurance program. I love my job before every one of the statements. You will sleep better that night. You see, there's something hidden in what I'm saying to you now. When she says, I like my job, she's really saying, I'm grateful for my job. And of all of the emotions we can have, according to Hans Selye, the number one stress specialist in America, the healthiest of all human emotions is gratitude. I said, you go down that list. I like my job. I love my job, rather. That is a way of gratitude. You'll sleep better the first night. Tomorrow morning, when you get up, Get back in front of the mirror just before you go to work. Get back in front of the mirror and repeat the process again with excitement and enthusiasm. I love my job because, and take the list with you. Because the reality is, you see, you will have started to change from a fault finder 
to a good finder. Some people do really find fault like there's a reward for it. They really do. <laughs> Take the list with you, and you will be able to add to that list absolutely guaranteed. Do this every morning and every night, and you will have an astonishing recovery from this advanced case of stinking thinking. Now, I didn't say that to her, but I'm saying it to you. That's what it was. It was an advanced case of stinking thinking. Well, six weeks later, I was back in Birmingham, Alabama. I was doing a follow-up sales seminar. Now, the lady was not in sales, but she'd been listening to my tapes. She'd been listening to Automobile University, and she had discovered that everybody sells. Everybody who will ever hear this is in selling. Whether you're a school teacher, a civil service worker, a military personnel, an executive secretary, it doesn't make any difference what you do, you sell every day of your life. There she was on the, at the sales seminar, seated on the front row, grinning so wide she could have eaten a banana sideways. I'm telling you, you're talking about somebody that was excited. She was turned on. I said, well, how you doing? She grinned even more broadly and said, Mr. Ziegler, I'm doing wonderfully well. And uh, thank you for asking. She said, you cannot believe how much those people down there have changed. <laughs> I got to lay it on the line, folks. You're not going to change anybody else till you change you. All right, that was awesome. So attitude is so very important. And maybe you have a right to be angry or to stew or to want to throw up your hands in disgust and just give up. But if you change your outlook, have a good attitude, I believe you will see growth. And oh, by the way, you'll probably learn something about yourself that needs to change along the way. God has a really interesting way of doing that. When we open our minds and our hearts to him, he'll often show us something we did not expect. And that's happened in my life for sure. So that's it for episode 21. I hope it was a blessing to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you check out our website at sellingforlife.com. Send us an email at contact at sellingforlife.com. So remember, whether you're selling Christmas trees or you're trying to convince your skeptical 12-year-old for one more year that there really is a Santa Claus, one thing is for sure, you are always selling for life.